So let's move on to uh, uh, Dr. Jayobi Chen uh, before we uh, uh, give uh, mic to Chief Peter Slowly and then Michael Allen after her, after him. Uh, so Dr. Jayobi Chen, she is uh, representing East Asian communities. She works uh, at uh, Carleton University, a professor there. Uh, Dr. Jayobi, are you there? Yeah. Yes, I'm here. Thank you, Abid. Um, I want to start by thanking uh, all the speakers uh, that uh, have gone before me. What you said have uh, really uh, been powerful and uh, and moving and uh, full of uh, wisdom and energy for carrying on uh, the anti-racism work. I also want to thank Abid and the United uh, for All um, because uh, the Chinese uh, uh, Canadian community has been faced with very challenging racism uh, issues and uh, often I feel very lonely but uh, uh, through you I feel like I have found uh, a home for anti-racism uh, activism so thank you for, for that. Uh, what I'm going to say today is uh, based on my experiential knowledge and uh, also my community engaged research in collaboration with uh, Ottawa Chinese Community Service Center. Uh, I want to um, start to note that uh, I feel we need to do more. Um, we feel very lonely and, uh, and uh, on the one hand, obviously I think the Chinese uh, community need to do more to reach out. We are often too quiet about the problems that uh, we experience. But on the other hand, uh, the other hand of the problem is also that there is a assumption about uh, the fact that uh, assumption that we do not experience racism. So I hope that uh, by sharing our experiences, um, we can bring awareness uh, to issues of racism that uh, that uh, this particular community experience. Um, I find it really, uh, I want to thank the speakers, um, especially two of them who went before me, who spoke about overt and the covert racism, because that's exactly what uh, I want to say. Uh, on the one hand, uh, we have an upsurge in anti-Chinese uh, and by extension, anti-Asian hate. And uh, this is most visible when it comes to overt attacks. So we have many reports of people being refused the service, being coughed at, spit on, pushed, and uh, beaten, and uh, a lot of uh, graffiti as well. And based on a survey conducted by Angus uh, Reid Institute, we can estimate about 50% uh, of Chinese Canadians have experienced uh, verbal assaults and other assaults. Um, and 60 of uh, Chinese Canadians have changed their daily routines to avoid attacks. We have heard uh, lots of um, despicable attacks, including harassment of children in the most uh, vile ways online. So um, I'm really, we are really feeling the burden of uh, the psychological burden of blame, of uh, finger pointing. Um, and uh, fear for, for safety. Um, now, many are aware of these issues, I think, uh, because of uh, media's report and many Canadian pol politicians have condemned these uh, incidents of racist attacks. However, most are not aware, uh, or if they're aware, are, are silent about uh, covert systemic anti-Chinese -ra racism, which actually is at the root of these overt uh, attacks. Um, so I want to speak a bit about that. While we pay attention to overt incidences of attacks on the street, which we can often see thanks to new communication technology, our cell phones, let's not forget that uh, what we are witnessing is a shadow pandemic caused by a virus, which uh, I would name it the escaping the Chinese virus. We are witnessing irresponsible politicians, lobbying groups, and some media um, 
use and promote inflammatory commentaries using terms such as the China virus, the Chinese virus, Wuhan virus, and the CCP virus. CCP stands for the Chinese Communist Party. I have uh, um, leaflets delivered to my door uh, claiming that uh, the CCP or China is behind uh, this, uh, this uh, pandemic. So uh, the Chinese have become the scapegoat of our time, like the Jews in the past. Indeed, anti-Chinese sentiments have been building up in Canada for some time. Chinese scapegoating has become a go-to narrative. It has been established as a common sense, as a norm almost. Uh, this is because we are living in a time of a uh, geopolitical shift. That's part of the context with China's rise in economic significance with the tension between China and uh, the U.S. escalating, particularly with Trump in power. Chinese scapegoating has become an easy weapon for politicians and uh, for some in the public to grab and take relief from. Um, I just want to briefly mention a recent Canadian example, which is uh, a global news report on April 30th. That report painted a very distorted picture of the Chinese Canadians. Um, they, it alleged that the Chinese Canadians helped the Chinese um, Communist Party stockpile PPE supplies with intention to sell later for profit. Now we have to remember in January and February, only China was affected by, uh, by COVID and it was a very frightening situation. And so uh, Chinese people, my friends uh, in the community, they bought PPEs and sent back to their families and friends and hospitals. They acted out of humanitarianism, compassion and voluntarism, but instead uh, their actions got uh, painted as uh, sinister acts directed by a foreign government. I led a petition to protest against this, but to this day we have not uh, 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 received any, any apologies or uh, willingness to have a dialogue about, uh, about this issue. Now, uh, this kind of reporting, irresponsible reporting, directly fuels anti-Chinese uh, hatred. And the evidence of this can be found in hateful anti-Chinese, anti-immigration comments left at a website featuring the Global News uh, Report. I'll quote some uh, millions of sleeper cells and uh, um, uh, intern all Chinese um, and so on. So as some commentators have observed, any Chinese Canadian who had higher education will now be faced with the question, who do you work for? That will be the implicit question that we will be faced with. Remember Derek Sloan's uh, racist outburst at uh, Dr. Teresa Lam. He, quote, uh, he said, does she work for Canada or China, or China? Now, on many occasions, this question will be raised, but will be raised in in very covert uh, uh, ways, and harm will be done. Opportunities will be uh, uh, will be lost, and uh, uh, exclusions will happen. However, the evidence of this discrimination will be elusive, because it's not a fist, it's not a push, it's not a spit, and it's not a slur. Now, this is uh, one form of systemic racism that is on the rise in China. It, it is very uh, insidious, very subtle, but very systemic. So um, it's troubling that uh, for me and uh, for, for us in the community that um, uh, many people, uh, many leaders would denounce attack incidents, but they choose to stay silent about the root cause, about the Chinese scapegoating um, uh, propaganda. So um, I want to just uh, use perhaps um, uh, um, 30 seconds to outline some um, uh, initiatives that uh, we are doing in the community to help address uh, some of this. Uh, one, the first one that I want to mention is uh, uh, there has been community collaboration with the police service. Uh, uh, they, uh, can, we had the police officers uh, who came to the uh, center, the community service center, to give a seminar about uh, reporting in these incidents. 
And uh, I have also been working with uh, the Community Service Center to produce uh, a Mandarin radio program series on understanding racism. So far, we have produced the programs uh, on a number of topics, such as understanding racism and the pandemic, and uh, hate is crime, and the third one is George Floyd's death and the black history. And the fourth one was uh, history of Chinese Canadians. We really feel that uh, we need to do a lot more public education about uh, racism, and we need to uh, to build uh, a lot more relationship with um, with other community organizations, uh, with uh, anti-racist organizations. So I, I will stop there, and I welcome your questions and uh, and comments.